Named after the mascots of each of the seven founding members and their respective military services, Six Bears and a Goat was founded in early 2017 and since then has become a formidable force in the Fredericksburg, Virginia brewing scene. The Lifeboat logo pays homage to the nautical background of the founding members and those who continue to serve in our nation's forces across the globe. In addition to taking home the gold for their May West Blondale in the 2018 Virginia Craft Beer Cup competition, they continue to improve their processes in hopes of bringing home even more next year. Along with beers, Six Bears and a Goat has a fully staffed kitchen that can stop hunger in its tracks with its newly renovated menu, a spacious outdoor seating area, as well as a 110-seat tasting room and one of the coolest bar tops we've ever seen. They feature a 15-barrel brew system and six flagship beers of varying styles that has the ability to quench even the most thirsty of sailors. So let's get right into it and try some of these beers. Hey guys, Andy and Sandra back with another brew review. This week we are at Six Bears and a Goat down here in Fredericksburg. We have to give a big thank you to the people at Six Bears and a Goat for having us out and letting us shoot on premises today. Much appreciated. Eight beers today to cover. So Sandra, you want to run us through kind of what we have here? On this side, you have the core four. So it goes kind of, I guess, counterclockwise. Okay. Um, from here all the way around. And then these are what the manager recommended that we should try on top of the core four. So they actually have different flights here. So they have a four, four taster flight. And then they have this, which is called a raft, and this is an eight taster flight. And then they have the anchor, which is literally an anchor, and it has all their beers. Ooh, so it just depends nice. on what kind of flight you want. Um, I thought this was cute, especially because it's on their actual brand. This is what you see when you look at their label, so it you associate the two together. Cool. So you can start off with number one. So number one is their Polar Roller Red IPA. This, I believe, is now being distributed in cans in grocery stores. So Very you nice. don't have to come all the way down here to drink it. Okay. It's a very malty beer. Roasty. Mm -hmm. Balanced, nice. yeah. That's good. I like that one. Yeah, that's that bitterness kind of kicks in only at the very end, though. Yeah, you get a lot of malty flavors in there at first. It's super and malty. And it finishes with a nice bitterness to it at the very end. It's a very tasty beer. Yeah. Nice and malty. Yeah. Nice and delicious. I think I'm gonna give this a four. This is a really good beer. What's the alcohol on this one? Six point nine percent, not five. That's a seven percent beer. Almost, yeah. Wow. It doesn't taste like a seven percent. It doesn't beer. taste like one. Pretty good. Yeah, I like that. What would you give it? I give it a four. Mm, we're yeah. in agreement. What do we got here? So the number two is part of the core four, and it's the trap house. Trap the powers. trap house. <laughs> Trop House, and that's a 5.6% um, pale ale. Since I like pale ales, I will go ahead and try this one. Ooh, okay, yeah. It's very crisp. That's a really nice beer. Yeah, that's light, crisp, refreshing. A little bitterness there. I feel like the balance has shifted a little bit in favor of the hops on this one. Yeah. Um, and the hops do kind of linger on the back of my throat a little bit. Yeah, more so than the red IPA, which is a little weird. Mm. It's very good. Because this is though. a pale ale, not an IPA, but yeah, yeah. The bitterness it lingers a little bit. Yeah. It makes me want to drink it more. Balanced and a little fruity. It's nice. Man, I like that one. That's pretty. They good. actually have crowlers here, and it's fifty. Per, it's not fifty. It's fifty cents less than the actual um, full pour. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. I have to agree. I yeah. think it's a four. I think it is. I could drink a ton of that. Yeah, and at 5.6%, totally do that. Can't complain. All right, so number three, so, the May West Blonde Ale. Yeah. This one is an award winner at the 2018, uh, which festival was it? The Virginia Craft. Virginia Craft Awards. Yeah, this so one this is a uh, is current a... year winner here, and it's a Blonde Ale. It's extremely balanced. Really? A little corny? Mm hmm It is very balanced. It's light. I get all the notes I'm supposed to smell when I smell it up front. It's got a slight, like, citrus character to it. I think it's supposed to be slightly florally. It is. Yeah, I'm getting some notes of, like, grass in there almost. It's very good. Very good. This is a very delicious beer. So what would you give it? I'm going to go with a four and a half on this one. 
I agree. Yeah. Four and a half is good. Yeah. Definitely conveys the style that you would want. Definitely awesome beer. They actually, I've seen it before in like certain supermarkets. So I'm not sure how many or which ones carry it, but they are starting to distribute. Cool. Keep your eye out for that yeah. one. That's good. Now we have their nitro beer. Now this is um, a stout. It's called the O Dark 30. Six percent. It it's not thick and like sweet like you would expect a stout to be. It's on nitro. Well, they have it in CO2 and nitro. Mm. I chose oh. the nitro version. Which one is where we drink it now? The nitro version. Okay, good. All right, right off the bat, it's creamy. It's malty. That dark malt is really, really popping out. I'm a firm believer if you can't have a stout on nitro. You shouldn't have a stout. You shouldn't have a stout. Try this one. <laughs> Although I drink stouts all the time that are not on nitro, but. They're just not as good when they're mm -hmm. not on nitro. So I'm getting a lot of oatmeal yeah. from that one. Yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. It's malty, that's balanced. Yeah, it's definitely not thick and sweet, but I think you kind of go into the thick and sweetness when you hit the imperial stout kind of category. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't expect a regular stout to be that thick and sweet anyways. It's, it's a really nice. easy drinking beer. It's actually, I think, lighter than your typical Guinness. But this is nice. It's a good one. It's a good stout. Rating? Four. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I think it's four. That's a good beer. Cool. Yeah. All right. So that was the core four. So now we're going to go over to some um, other beers that they have here that the manager recommended. This one is the um, white IPA. Ooh. It's 4.8%, I believe. Okay. It's called the seize, seize the Day, as in sea, like water. Oh, sea. because the theme, right? Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. You, right. you could try that one first. It's very light. Yeah, that is like almost translucent. Okay, smells so like an IPA. Yep, smells like an IPA. It literally tastes like a light IPA. Oh, you know, like if you're to drink a light beer, but you want all the IPA-ness to it. Yeah, you know what? I see where you're going with that. But not necessarily a session either. It's so... The, what you're what you're tasting, I think, is the body of it. It's quite light. Damn, that's really good. This yeah. is a summertime IPA for sure. It's yeah. definitely sessionable. That's super good. I really like that one. Now, there's supposed to be some notes of pine in here. I definitely get the pine from the hops for sure. But I'm also getting like that citrusy character. Yeah. Like, typical in your IPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna do a four and a half on that one. It still retains all the qualities of an IPA. I'm gonna give it a four. I mean, I'm just a big. IPA drinker and um, I like how light it is and it does still maintain a lot of that a lot of that IPA characteristics and it's really crushable even though it is quite hoppy. Cool. The Old Dominion IPA at 5.9%. This is a Northeastern style hazy IPA. Ooh, hazy IPAs. Ooh, okay. It's not quite as fruity as I was thinking it would be. It's a little lighter in body. It's, it's just toned it's, down a notch, yeah. I would say. Yeah. And it's also under 6%. So it kind of, I think, breaks even with the fact that, you know, it is lighter in yeah. alcohol content as well. It's all the flavors are there. It's just toned down a notch for me. I think I'm going to give that one a three and a half. Okay. I'm I think that's it, fair. I'm going to give it a solid four. Okay. That's. I mean, if all juicy Northeastern IPAs could be under 6%, I would be crushing them left and right Dude, all the time. Dude, I wish more of them were. Yeah. Because I would drink them all day, yeah. all the time. I love a juicy IPA. I really do. But they're all too high in alcohol for the summertime, and I just can't I just can't drink more than one of them Yeah. and be okay to, like, swim in the ocean, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. This beer, it's a traditional Hefeweizen. Okay. That I'm told. I mean, it smells like a Hefeweizen. Got that coriander popping out. There's some cloviness to it. I hope this one is like the farm breweries where the clove doesn't really overtake. Awesome.
some dudes. Yeah, that's really good. It doesn't, I feel okay. like the carbonation level isn't, isn't super high. That's nice. But it's smooth, right? Well, in all fairness, you know, these have been sitting a Okay, bit. yeah, I mean. So, but yes, I see what you're going with it. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm getting more clove in this one too, so. There is more clove, it. yeah. There's more banana. But it's really balanced. Mm -hmm. I think that's my criteria for Hefeweizen is that I like them really balanced instead of, not necessarily where the clove overtakes the entire beer, but as long as it's balanced, it can be as high or as low as it needs to be. Strong four on that one for me. Definitely. I think I'll do a four and a half. Wow. Four Stepping half. it up. For 4.8%. I mean, it's person. really good. There's nothing in that beer that like is too strong. So like you yeah. were saying, like some Hefeweizens are a bit heavy on the banana or they're a bit heavy on the clove and that puts, that deters people from tasting their beer because maybe they're not a huge clove fan or they're not a huge mm. banana fan. So very good. It's a, this is a, Double IPA. Ooh. 8.7%. Wow. If you're big into IPAs, this is one of the go tos. Okay. Doesn't taste like an 8.7% beer. That was my initial thought. This tastes like a 5% beer. There's no alcoholic wow. twinge to that. Which makes it deadly. The mouthfeel is really light. Wow. So it's good and bad, I guess you could say. For certain people. I mean, it's good for me. <laughs> it's lighter in body, but it's really balanced. Since I'm a big IPA person, I'm expecting a little bit more body to that one. You know, I'm expecting a bit more, so I think a three and a half is, is a good rating for it. Not to say it's bad in any way. No, no. This is the thing, I could drink this all summer long, I and mean, it would be 9% and I'd be messed up all the yeah. time. Hmm, yeah, three and a half for me. Same here, I think it's a fair rating. Yeah. All right, everybody, well, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning into the channel. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell button in the corner to make sure you get notified of new videos that come out. As always, thanks for tuning in and stay crafty. Cheers. Cheers.